In this video, I'm going to take a look at the word search feature of the puzzle generator for PowerPoint. Now, as you know, if you've watched the uh, introduction to the export tool video, when creating a word search, the first thing you need to do is open the export tool. And in here, if you go along to config, you have the alphabet letters. So if you're creating uh, word searches in a different language, this is the first thing you might want to change. You can obviously translate them to your own language or another one. Now, once you've done that, down the bottom is a tab called word search. If you click on that, here is where you'll put all of your words and titles for your word searches. Now there are a couple of different options for the word search. In this video, I'm just going to take you through the what I like to call a traditional word search, which is just one word search per page with the words to find underneath. So in this video, we're just going to completely ignore the middle column. Now when creating these word searches, you can have that blank or have data in there. It doesn't matter because it will ignore them in the type of word searches we're going to create in this video. So in the first column, what you want to do is paste your words in here or type them in. And in our third column here, we want to have our titles. So here is when you'll need to decide how many words per puzzle you're going to have. So as I've got um, four titles and 20 words, that would mean I have five words per puzzle. Now, if you're unsure on how many um, words you can have per puzzle, you can quickly go in here, click continue on here, one grid, that's the type of um, word search we're going to be creating, click OK, and then you have your options here, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. So make sure you have the correct amount of titles and words you want to have per puzzle. Once you've done this, you want to go back to main, click submit to export. Now, if you get this um, error message here, not all data sheets exported, we do just close PowerPoint. And then there we go, all data sheets exported. So if we go into PowerPoint, and then a blank presentation, and then what we want to do is we want to remove the placeholders on the slide just like this, and then click the Puzzle Generator tab at the top here. Now the first thing you want to do is choose the trim size which you want to create your word searches for. I'm going to go with 8.5 by 11, and then you click Puzzles, and then go along to Word Search here. Now the first um, option you'll see is the option to include a game explanation or a puzzle explanation. This is just a, a simple or quick, you know, how to play, how to do word searches. You can edit this text, and then if you want to include it, tick this box here. If you don't, leave it blank, and then click continue. Now here, you have a few different options. In this video, we're just going to go through the one grid format. In other videos, I'll show you the other formats and how to make the most of them as well. So for here, just do one grid format, click OK. Now, our first options here are at the top, <coughs> where we can choose the color for the letters in our grid. Now, on KDP, it's likely you want to have this in black or gray. I'm going to leave it as black. And then our next option here is our circling words color. That is, so if 
um, down here where it says solution grids. If you choose to show the solutions with the answers circled, that's the color of the circle around them. So I'm going to have gray like that. Now, our first um, option here is for the grids. So this is the, the um, actual grid itself with all the, the words in and the random letters fill in the grid. You can choose any font in Office or what you've added to the export tool. You can choose a size here. Now, when you choose a size here, it's important to note that it will do its best to honor the uh, font size you've selected. But if it needs to decrease it because it can't fit your table on your page, it will go down. So just bear that in mind. It's not a definite that you're going to get the size you select here. Now, our next option here is to choose our header font size. So this is for the titles, if you remember, in the um, export file, what size you want the titles above each word search to be. I'll go 30. And here we have our word font size. So this is the words defined underneath the word search, what size you want them to be. Now our next option is the rows number and the column number. This is how large you want your word search to be. Obviously, 20 by 20 is a square grid. You can um, have more, uh, row, more rows to make it a rectangle grid. The most important thing here, though, is you need to have at least the amount of rows or columns as the longest word in your words defined. So that's the character. So if you've got a 22 character word in your words defined, then you'll need to have at least 22 rows or 22 columns, otherwise it won't be able to fit the word in. Our next option here is our words number. Now, if you remember, as I said in the export tool, we're gonna to decide in advance when we put our data in, how many words we're gonna have per puzzle. Now, if you remember, I have chosen five words because I have four titles and 20 words. Now, our next option here is how many attempts um, the program has of fitting each word in before it gives up and tells you that it can't fit it in. Now, for most purposes, I recommend you keep this on 4,000. But if you, um, if you have shorter words or generally know you have no problem, problems fitting words in, you can lower this down a little bit. Because it is a little bit of trial and error to find out what works best for you. Now, our next option here is how you want to display the grid. So I think this works best if I show you vis visually. So our first option here is to show only the outlines. So this is around the edge here. So I'll just quickly show you that. So as you can see here, this is with the grid around the outside and nothing inside. So if I undo that and go back into word search, Other option here is to show grid lines. So again, I'll show you how that looks. So that then shows you all the grid lines. And we go back again, we've got one more option. Untick that. which is, is to have nothing at all. So just, just the words like this here, the letters, sorry. And let me go back, back to word search. Now here we have a few options. So you can force the letters in the grids to lowercase if you want. By default, it's always uppercase. So if you want lowercase in the grids, tick this box. 
Our next option here is our word list option. So you can choose to display the words defined in a table or separated by commas. So if you have a lot to find, you might find uh, separated by commas works. It works better for longer words particularly. I'll just show you how that, um, how that looks. So if we go back. So as you can see, rather than a, um, a column downwards, each word is just separated by a comma. Let's go back into word search again. Back to table. See in the table, now you can choose the alignment. So you can choose it to be left aligned in the table, center aligned or right aligned. I tend to go centered, but again, that's personal preference. And you can also choose the order in which the words go. So they can all either go down. So that means column one, then row one, two, three, four, etc. Then column two, one, two, three, four. Or they go across. So row one, column one, two, three, four. Row two, column one, two, three, four, etc. We also have the option here to uh, change the casing of the words so you can force them to uppercase, force them to lowercase, or keep the same as they are in your Excel uh, sheet. Here we have the option to choose a different column number. Now, if you've got lower than so default is four, by the way, standard is four, which works well. Say if you've got 20 words, you can have five words a column, but for example, if you've got five words and then you have four columns what you're going to have is it's not going to look it's going to look a little bit odd so what you can do is force it to one as you saw in my example so that I've just got them down the center like that because the I show if I show you the um, if I show you the standard here visually here it does not look as nice so the ability to choose the force of the amount of columns is very useful now our final option here is to add a gap between the word search and the word list so if you feel when you generate the word searches you want a little bit more space between the uh, word search itself and the list below, you can add it here. I tend to just leave that. Our next option here is to add margins. Now, typically, um, if you're creating for KDP, obviously you want to have a margin and you can go all the way up to uh, one inches here. Our next option here is our solution grids. Now this is three different ways of showing our solutions. So if I show you each one, our first one is to show only the right cells. So what that does there, as you can see, it shows you only where the answers are. Our next option is to circle words. And then if you choose circling words, you can choose a different thickness that you want to circle the words in. Now, this is probably what, if you remember, this is how I had the solutions on before, but I'll just show you again. So they're circled as you might traditionally assume uh, solutions to be. Circled, so it looks like a pencil or pen has circled the answers. And then the final way we have to, um, to display the solutions is to highlight the right cells. So if I show you this, as you can see here, the answers are shaded in. So if we undo that and go back into the word search, go back to circling words. Now to the left here, we have the option to set different word directions. So this is what directions you want 
the words to be placed into your puzzle. Now, obviously, you may wish to um, decrease this and have only simple directions like this, only up, down, and to the right, or whichever directions you want. Obviously, the easier ones like this would be ideal for, say, kids or seniors, and then you can have more complicated ones where you go in, in all directions. Now, our final two options here are to hide titles and to hide our word list. Now, where you might find these uh, useful is if you want to create a different amount of word searches or word search um, solutions per page. So what I'm going to do is I will show you how to do that. So on here, I'm going to click hide titles and I'm going to hide the word list in solution pages. Now you'll see why in just a moment. So if I click OK. There we go, so you see my word searches have generated. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to export the slides as a PNG file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the first four because that is the actual word searches and not solutions. I'm going to keep the image quality resolution the same. Just wait for it to do this. And if I create a folder, word search test, do word search, click OK on that. And then I'm going to go export slide as PNG again. And this time I'm going to do slides five to eight, which are the solutions. Again, keep the quality and resolution the same. And then I go into word search test, create a new folder call that solutions, again click OK on there. Now why I've um, left the word list off our solutions is because I'm going to um, bulk import them again and show the solutions in a different manner. So now I've exported them all, if I just delete all these and then add new slide, delete the placeholders, choose the trim size that you want for your book. I'm going to stay with um, 8.5 by 11. And then if you go to bulk import images, and then what we're going to do is going to choose the uh, word search folder, which is the word search system. And here I'm going to say I want I want four uh, four images per slide. Um, but as you can see here, you have a lot more uh, flexibility to the amount of images or puzzles or solutions you want to. Um, you want to have per slide all the way up to 20. I'm going to stick with four. Uh, I'm going to choose a title here because I took it off um, on my actual word search. So I stick with word search. Um, here you can set the different minimum margins and spaces. Um, if you want to sort of keep it all here together and to minimize the spacing, just tick this little box here and then we click OK. As you can see, I've now got four word searches on one page. And then what I can do then if I go back to bulk import images and then I do the solutions. And then say I want to do them, I'll do them four as well. I change this to solution. 
And again, keep all the other settings the same, click OK. And then we have our solutions as well. Now, as you can see, this method allows you full power and flexibility over how many puzzles and solutions you want per page. Now, there's just one other um, sort of quick handy feature I'm going to show you. So I'm just going to delete all that. I'm going to delete these text boxes. Go back to puzzles, word search. And then let's just generate all the same here. So what you can do is you can move things around. So for example, say you feel you want your word search up a little bit higher. You can set a distance in here and click up. And then what that will do, that applies that to every single slide as well. So you don't need to go through every slide and make changes. You just need to do it on the one. And another feature you can do is, for example, say you've created a word search and you want it to have a certain size. So at the moment, this is on 19. And say you, you really wanted to have it on 20. What you can do is then go to change individual fonts and then change it in here to 20. And what that will do is force it change to 20. Hopefully it doesn't mess up our formatting. Let's just wait and see. There we go. As you, and again, this applies that all the way through your word searches. So I hope this video has given you a quick insight to how powerful the word search generator is and hopefully it can help you um, get started making your own puzzles. Thanks for watching.